Good morning again. Um, glad you guys are here. Uh, it's a blessing to have you here. I'm going to uh, go ahead and just start off with prayer. Um, if that's all right, I'm going to pray one more time and then um, we'll jump into this. But uh, I need to pray at least one more time before I start. So uh, let's pray and we'll start. Father, thank you for this morning again. And um, Lord, I thank you for everybody that you've brought uh, into this place this morning, uh, for each person in this room, each heart. And um, Lord, you know what uh, we bring here and you know where each of us is at. Um, and where our hearts are. And there are some of us in this room who have come struggling and uh, maybe doubting or just uh, in a place in life where it's just it's difficult. And in a season, um, it's just where it's just hard, Lord. And um, it's easy for us to, to kind of stay there. And so I pray for those hearts uh, that, that are doing that, God, that you would speak to them this morning and encourage them. And um, I know we've had that time of worship, God, and maybe that's already happened and we praise you for that. Um, that as we worship, you speak back to us in that. And, Father, and uh, also hearts um, this, uh, that have come here, God, who things are good, and, and um, we praise you for those times as well. And I just pray, God, that you play it on our hearts to encourage one another while we're here. Um, lay it on our hearts, Father, to, to take this time um, that we have together on a Sunday morning and uh, really be intentional with it and with one another and, and with engaging with you as we give our offerings and as we get into your word here. Father, that you would help us listen. I know I need your help with that so much that I'd really hear what it is you want us to, to, to say to me and to say to us, and God, that we would take it and use it. Um, I pray that we keep growing in, in your knowledge and understanding it. And Father, we praise you for the blessings you give. Father, we praise you for who you are, and we praise you that you do walk with us, that you have not left us, that you have not abandoned us. And God, um, I, just, I pray the same things as Dad did a little bit ago. Um, that even though it doesn't always feel like it, Lord, that we would intentionally rest in that. Um, may you speak now. May they be your words. Um, not mine, not anybody else's, God, but the truth. Uh, I just pray that it would be heard uh, for change and for transformation and um, what uh, you want it to be. And nothing less than that. I just pray these things in your name. Amen. All right, uh, we spent last uh, several weeks um, going through the book of Colossians. So, I mean, if you're visiting with us this morning, that's awesome. Glad you're here. Uh, if you've missed a couple, that's okay, too. We're just going to kind of do a quick review of where we've been uh, to catch you up to speed. Um, we saw how right away Paul opens up this letter uh, to this church in Colossae with encouragement. He just reminds them that he's praying for them uh, all the time. And uh, he, uses, he uses words like uh, bear fruit, keep bearing fruit, uh, keep moving, uh, keep... Uh, living in the Lord, growing in the knowledge of God. And remember that growing in the knowledge of God is not just brain knowledge, but heart knowledge, that we would use it, that we'd understand it uh, and apply it uh, in our lives. Um, he also, remember this one, uh, he also encouraged this church to keep enduring. Uh, we looked at what suffering was and, and uh, kind of had to try to have a heavenly eyes or eternal eyes on, on suffering and what that perspective looks like. And he encourages this church just to keep enduring and to have patience uh, while they do that. And in all of it, remember to be thankful, he says. To them. Be thankful uh, to the Lord in all this that's going on and that Christ is everything, that he's all we need and he holds all things together, that he reigns supreme. Um, he reminds us uh, also in this uh, beginning of this letter um, that we were his enemies at one point. That outside of Christ, uh, we don't belong to him. That we were his enemies. That he's, through the cross and in his death, his burial and his resurrection, he's brought us to himself. He says he's reconciled all things to himself, which means he's brought us uh, to him uh, through what was done on the cross, through his sacrifice there. And then he presents us, I love this, he brings, presents us without blemish. Think about that for a minute. Anyone feel like they're without a blemish? I'm not talking about pimples, okay? All right? Spiritually, sometimes I don't feel that way. Uh, we, we know our mistakes. We know what I, we struggle with, and I don't always feel clean and pure and without blemish, but we got to rely on the truth and stand on the truth of God that he, he has reconciled us to himself and has presented us without blemish, that in Christ you are pure, you are holy, a uh, pretty awesome reminder Paul gives that church and gives us. 
And he encourages them to keep living out uh, the gospel in their lives. He uses words like stay rooted, be rooted in him, that we follow him first. Remember that reminder a few weeks ago? It's not about human regulations and human tradition and human rule, uh, but it's about following him and that relationship with him, that he goes above all that, that he is first. Uh, and, and also to, to know that so we're not... Um, twisting or, or having these different philosophies come in that we're surrounded by all the time that we would know and understand the truth. In chapter 3, uh, we started last week, and we see how he begins to, to focus on how this is lived out in our lives. Um, how do we do this? And he begins to kind of work on that in this letter and then flesh that out. And in this response of being rescued uh, by him, in this response of being saved, um, it, how do we live it out? And when we fully are surrendered to him, to him these things begin to happen. Uh, they begin to follow in our lives uh, because we understand what he's done and who he is and who we are now. So it's just be a response uh, to him. So what's that look like? Last week we started that off. First four verses. Um, and we saw that Paul says in verse 1 in chapter 3, he says, Since then, uh, then you have been raised with Christ. So who's he talking to? Remember this? If he's talking to, to people who have been raised with Christ, he's also talking to people who died with Christ. So who's he talking to? You guys awake? Followers, us, right? If, you, if, you, if you've surrendered your life to Christ, if you're a follower of Christ, he's talking to us, he's talking to you. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. And I want you to remember that phrase uh, as we walk through the rest of this. Keep that statement in mind um, as we walk through how. Uh, some of these things he's, that uh, we're asked uh, to do. So last week, uh, we looked at uh, verses one through four again, and we looked at seek, okay? It says, set your heart on the things above. That word seek set your heart just means seek. It's a heart thing. What are we seeking? Are we seeking the things down here, right? In, in the horizontal, where we live and where we're walking around, or as children of God, as new creations with a new life, are we seeking things vertical? Are we keeping our eyes on Him, setting our hearts on the things above? And we also talked about where our minds are, right? Set your hearts, set your minds on those things as well, what do we think about? What consumes our thoughts? Um, and are we focusing and are we pursuing the things that are just temporary? Or is our desire and our pursuit the things that are eternal? That's a good question. And, and uh, I don't know about you, um, but those first four verses have been screamed at me over and over and over this week. As soon as we leave this place and as soon as I left this place last week, Sunday night, I was hit with that. Think vertical or think horizontal. Anybody else? Soon as I left this place, it was right in my face. And I praise God for his scripture and I pray that it keeps sinking into us because I was reminded over and over and over again, I'm not even kidding, this week, time after time, am I gonna go vertical or am I gonna, am I gonna sulk and be mad and miserable in the horizontal? Over and over again this week. Um, and so uh, how encouraging is this letter uh, it was to them and, and that it would be to us and just great reminders for us um, as we live this out and as we move forward. So we're going to read Colossians 3. I'm going to start with 1 again and we're just going to stop uh, with verse 11 this morning. So let's, let's uh, we're going to review just a little and we'll stop with 11. It says this, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your heart on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. So put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. Sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once, once lived. But now you must rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other. Since you have taken off your old self with its practices and you've put on the new self which is being renewed in the knowledge in the image of its creator. 
here. There is no Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free. But Christ is all and is in all. All right, we're going to stop there this morning um, because this is already full of stuff. Uh, so much good stuff. And so just, a, again, just a reminder and to connect this to last week. This is really part two, honestly. Uh, same message, just part two. So remember, seek, set your heart on the things above, seek after the things above, set your mind on those things. This morning, what we want to look at is we want to look at the surrender part, life. Just life, how that's lived out, where we're living, how do we live, how do we move in this? And, and do we even, we're going to ask this question today, do we even desire to do that? In verse 5, uh, Paul uses some pretty strong language. What are the first three words he says there in verse 5? What's he say? Put to death, right? Right? Put to death. Um, some pretty strong language. He says, put to death these things. He's saying, kill these things off. Destroy these things. Put them to death, these sinful things. Now, here's the thing. Before we even get into this list, I want to ask some questions. Um, and, I, and I know this is, a, this is one of those, <laughs> if, you were, if you grew up in Sunday school, this is one of those Sunday school questions that you know, the kids kind of know the answer to, but you ask. But I want us to revisit this. How serious is sin? How serious is it? It's, it's pretty serious, right? Uh, it's really serious. And here's the thing. I think sometimes we forget a little bit while we're, while we're living down here in the, in, the, in the horizontal and life gets going and, and, and we get busy and we kind of go through our emotions and get going in life. And here's the thing. Sometimes, and I found myself doing this, and uh, if, you're, if, you're, if uh, you're honest and you want to raise your hand, that would help me feel better. Uh, sometimes we even laugh at sin. Anybody ever laugh at it on TV or a movie? Uh, it's what we watch, what we listen to, things like that. It, it's gotten to the place where I'm guilty of it, where I, 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 the world kind of makes light of it, and we even find ourselves laughing at things that, that are... Man, so I've laughed at things that are downright sinful. Downright sinful. And so the question is, is, is again, as we, as we look at this and we, we, we walk through this, how serious is sin? I think we can look at the cross to see. And we're going to put a picture up. How serious is sin? This is how serious it is. That's how serious our sin is. It's serious enough that, that Christ had to, to go through this because of sin. That's how, that's how bad it is. That's how serious it is. It's rebellion against God is not to be laughed at. It's serious. It, sin separates. And here, listen, if you're outside of Christ this morning and you don't have a relationship with him and, and you don't know him, here's what happens. When we die in our sin, you'll be eternally separated from him forever. All right? It's, there's a term for that. It's called hell. There's a name for it. That's how serious sin is. And so we've got to realize that as we move into this. And it's linked to our earthly nature down here, right? When we sin, it's, it's, it's linked to, to our earthly nature um, on this planet and this, this uh, horizontal that we live in. And Paul is telling us here, three words, what's he say? Put it to death. Put to death these things. It's an uncompromising statement. Kill it. Put it to death. Continual surrender to Christ who did that for us on the cross. It's a surrender to him daily and, and not just once, but as we work this out and as we live this out, it's a continual surrender, right? Every day we battle our earthly nature. We battle those things and we, we continue to put those things to death. Um, Paul gives us a list of those things and 
Um, found out just in studying this this week that lists were pretty common, even back then, uh, that uh, Paul uses them in other letters, um, that it was a way for people to remember, just like us, right? And uh, especially in Colossa, where these, these people had come from a really pagan culture, and now they were Christians, they were still battling the things that they, were, they had been living in, just like we do, right? And we still get pulled to some of those things that we used to live in. Now, I don't live in them anymore, my earthly nature sometimes wants to visit. Anybody else? Yeah. And so, so Paul's just saying, hey, I'm gonna list some of these things out. These are the things I want you to put to death. We need to put to death. Verse five gives us this first list. Um, we're gonna look at the put off list um, today. Okay, and there's two of those next week. Dad's gonna uh, be preaching and he's gonna look at what we put on, um, which is pretty awesome. So um, uh, come back next week. You can get the, the other half of this. Um, and these are the things we want to destroy. First one uh, that we have that he lists is what? It's up there? Sexual immorality, right? Then he says impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which he says leads to idolatry. idolatry. Now, uh, the first, things, uh, first thing here, these lists kind of build on each other a little bit, um, but the first three here are really closely Related, actually, actually, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires are, are really close. Okay, um, so let, let's just kind of look at this real quick. When it comes to sexual immorality, um, and I think we m know this, most of us. If not, this will be something new, awesome. Um, but that is anything we do outside of God's boundaries for us, sexually, right? God created it. Okay, and yes, we're using sex word in church. It's okay, okay? He created it. He made it, and he gave boundaries. He said he created man, he created woman, and he said, here, <laughs> now go multiply. It's a gift. It's something that he's given us, but he's given us these boundaries between a man and a woman in marriage. Now, what happens when we go outside of those boundaries? Destruction, chaos, pain, hurt, brokenness, miserable life. It's just hurt. It causes destruction outside of those boundaries, outside of his creation. Inside of his boundaries, it's a wonderful thing. He's created it. It was his idea. We didn't invent it. Man, it's an awesome thing, but man, we go outside of that, we see destruction. We see this all around us, right? Right? You guys know this. It's all around us. We got, we got you know, husbands and wives um, having affairs and marriages breaking apart. Going outside of the bounds that God has created for us. We have, um, uh, we have people uh, that have addictions or fighting addictions to pornography. Flat out addicted to where it's even changing the way men think. It's rerouting things in their brains because they're so addicted to this. It's outside of the boundaries of what God has intended for us. We have sexual abuse. Destructive. Evil. Because it's been outside of God's boundaries. We've fallen so far. We have so many other perversions that, that uh, men has created with these things that God has given us. It's destructive. And the evidence is all around us. You don't have to look far at all because we've gone outside of what God has intended for us. A marriage between a man and a woman. And we see what's doing all around us. You also see, he also mentions here um, uh, impurity. And that's linked to this. Uh, but impurity, uh, just a simple definition of this is just taking what's pure. You're gonna go, duh, I know. Okay, <laughs> taking what's pure and polluting it, right? Impurity. It's just a simple definition. So it's just taking something that's good or pure and then just polluting it, um, using it for something that's not. Um, sex is on that list, definitely, okay? And we've seen that and we know that. Um, but what about our motives? Anybody ever think about this? Anybody ever do something good but have really terrible motives? Anybody honest enough to raise your hand on that one? Okay. One, there's two of us. Okay. Yeah, sometimes we can do, want to do something really good, but our motives are not real good. They kind of can be selfish sometimes. And we can take that thing and kind of 
kind of pollute it just a little bit. I think most of us have done that. We just made it and raise our hands. Uh, happens. Um, money's another one, okay? Money's not evil. The love of money is evil, but money in itself is not evil. We handle it, we make it, we spend it, but sometimes we use it for not real good things, impure things. Um, drugs. I'm talking about good drugs, the kind that help us. We can even take the drugs that help us and what do we do with them? We twist it and we depend on them. We get to the point even with those the things that are supposed to help us um, become addicted to those because they help us cope. They, they, get, they get us fuzzy down here on the horizontal. We, we like the fuzzy because we don't want to deal with this here because we've forgotten the vertical. So we depend on here. And then so we can take this thing that's, it's okay, it's not bad. It's meant to help us, but we can twist it. Um, there's so many other examples there. Um, and then he moves on again to, to lust. And we can again couple that with, with evil desires, go hand in hand uh, with immora immorality in this context that he's talking to us on. And then he moves on to another one. What's that one? The G word. Greed, right? And he says, this, this is idolatry. Um, and greed can be anything, not just money. That's the first thing we, we think of um, there is greed, and it's just, it could be anything. I want more, I want more, I want more. So it could be money, um, it could be stuff, um, it could be relationships, but it's just, I want more of this, I want more of this, I want more of this, and it leads to idolatry, which idolatry is setting anything up over God. And we worship that. And what we're saying to God is you're not enough. When we live in greed and we just want this, we want this, and it's not enough, it's not enough, we're saying, you're not enough for me. And that can be, any, again, anything. It can be relationships. You know, if, if, if you're single and your, your whole life is trying to find a, a spouse, be care, just be careful. That can be an idol. That can be greed. That can, those things we set up before him. Um, I mean, it could be your spouse. An idol can be anything. Um, it's dangerous stuff. Anybody ever struggle with any of these? Okay, phew, good, okay. Um, anyone ever, again, have an impure motive, ever? Okay, I, yeah, I have. Um, anyone here ever have an evil desire, ever? Okay, yep, yeah. Um, anyone here ever have a lustful thought, ever? Okay, yeah, some of us, no hands, just head nods on that one. Okay, uh, I understand. Um, we all have. We all have. So let's just get real, all right? We all have. It's a, it's a struggle with this down here. And, and again, this, this ruthly nature that we have is very self-centered. Self and Paul, again, is saying at the beginning of this list, put these things to death. Kill them. Put them to death. Which means we surrender our lives to Christ every day when we get rid of these things. Um, let's keep going. Verses 6 through 7. He says, because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in your life. Uh, you used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived. Okay, verse six. Um, not a very comfortable verse. And a lot of times um, we don't preach on the wrath of God a whole lot. We like to talk about the love of God, the love of God, the love of God, which is all true, okay? He, he's got his love. He's loving. But we don't really talk about his wrath very often. Why do you think that is? Does it freak anybody out? Yeah, it should, a little. I think that's healthy. Um, so we're going to spend just one moment on this. And again, I want, you, I want to ask that question as we walk into this. How serious is sin? Really serious. I, that's not even enough to say it that way, but it's, it's really serious. Um, I found this. I, I love this. I love, um, Matt Chandler says it this way. And this made so much sense. I want to read this to you. If God is the creator of and the commander of beauty and goodness and the reflection of his moral character and is not bothered by us standing in opposition to that, he is at best indifferent to sin and at worst cares, and at worst cares nothing for the pain and sorrow that rebellion causes all over the world. He says, so God's wrath towards disobedience is absolutely tied to his holiness and beauty. You cannot separate them out. He is not holy and beautiful and righteous if he is not wrathful towards rebellion against that holiness. Make sense? I think so. It's, you can't separate that. There's God is love, but there's God is wrath. And we've seen that, and we can see that in our history. And here again, listen. We believe this here, whether everybody does or not, it's still absolute truth, that he is coming back again. And if you die without Christ, 
there will be wrath. And you will see the wrath of God outside of Christ. So heads up if you're not in Christ. Or heads up if you think being a Christian is just filling a seat in church on Sunday and that's it. Heads up. Okay? God's wrath cannot be separated from His love and His holiness. Um, We've got to remember that. It's serious. And then verse 7, um, Paul, Paul says, Look, you used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived. Just, just like he's reminding them here, hey, don't get too big for your britches here. It's almost like he's saying that. Look, you used to live this way. So don't get too cocky. Don't get too arrogant. Don't get too goody, 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 people. When, when other people who are lost and who are completely lost and now you're saved and you look at them and think, ooh. And you want to, don't get like that, okay? Remember, you used to live that way. This was you too. We have to remember that. We were all outside of Christ. We are all sin, have sinned. We all fall short of the glory of God. We all need Jesus, every single one of us. Don't forget, that was you um, when you lived that way. Um, just another great reminder. And then he continues um, uh, with his other list. So look at Colossians uh, 3 again, and we're going to go through 8 through 10 here and just walk through this. Uh, so the other list, he goes, now you must get rid of yourselves uh, in such things as these. What's the first one? Anger, okay, rage, then what? Malice, then slander and filthy language, okay? And then he goes on, even to give an example, and he says, do not do what? Do not lie to each other. So he gives us another list here. Anger, rage, malice, slander, filthy language, and lying. Now, we've got to be careful with these because you've got one list here. Now we've got another one. This second one, I'm trying to think of a good way to say it. Uh, it seems like almost like a little um, softer or quieter in some ways, like um, a little easier to hide these kinds of things to put off. Um, and sometimes uh, what we can do with this is we can have attitudes um, that uh, compare a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, okay, I, I don't struggle with sexual morality much. You know, I, I'm, I'm faithful. I do this, I do this. I'm not like these people over here. And, but yeah, I, I, you know, I might have a little bit of a temper. I might be a little bit mad. We can't do that. And sometimes we can, we can start comparing. Um, the, these ang this anger and rage and malice and slander, these all deal with, uh, with attitudes of the heart and these are all just as destructive. Just as destructive. So this isn't a comparison list saying these are really bad and these are sort of bad. Okay, bad, get rid of them. Um, and so we gotta be careful with that. So let me ask you this. He, he starts off with anger and rage and they, they really go hand in hand. These are tied together. Anyone here... I'm afraid to ask this. Anyone here have a temper? Okay, some of us do. Anyone here ever lose it sometimes? <laughs> okay, I know who to avoid. All right. Um, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, and we, we struggle with anger. We can struggle with rage. And, and again, um, these things are so destructive. So let's not play this game of, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm not immoral, but I do have a temper and not take this serious. Um, still, still destructive. Um, we can be filled with anger and do just as much destruction and create just as much pain and hurt as an affair or sexual immorality. Um, just as destructive. I found this, um, just researching, um, there's a, a, a psychologist who wrote a book called Beyond Anger. His name's Harbin, and he wrote this. He says this, just dealing with anger, uh, and he studied it with men. He says, as a clinical psychologist specializing in the treatment of angry men, I've seen many of my patients lose jobs, wives, and opportunities because they were simply not able to handle normal frustrations and disappointments in life. Now, I want to read this and listen, guys. Not just, this isn't just men, but I want you to read this and see if any of this strikes that chord, okay? As I read it, unfortunately, it, did, it does a little bit. They argue, they insult, and they sulk. They come to think of themselves as ineffective, unlucky, or just plain losers, they don't admit to this to anyone. But deep inside, they feel inferior. Others don't like them and they don't like themselves. Their anger gets in the way of their ability to be good bosses, good workers, and good family men. 
I've also spent a great deal of time evaluating men who have been charged with serious crimes, such as assault and murder. And many of these crimes were not premeditated. These men did not start out with the intention of hurting others. They reacted impulsively, often out of anger. Serious. Serious stuff. Ephesians 4, 26 through 27. In your anger, do not sin. Now, is it wrong to be angry sometimes? When does it become wrong? Right. When you're unrighteous, when we lose control, when we lose it. Self-control is lost and we're angry and we lose our temper. Okay? And it says here in Ephesians, in your anger, okay, do not what? Sin. So let, don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. He's saying take care of it. Take care of it. And do not give the devil a foothold. There's a great... Uh, Insight on how deadly anger can be. Do not let the devil get a foothold in your anger. Take care of it. Um, great reminder. He goes on to talk about malice, which is another one right under this. Malice is just Ill, Ill intent for someone, wanting that to happen. So, you know, wanting something bad to happen to someone else. Has anyone ever, has anyone ever said something like this? Man, I hope they get it. Anybody ever said that? Anyone ever said this? They really got what they deserved. Yep. And if, if it happens, great. And you almost kind of want it to happen. Been there? Malice. That's malice. Uh, an attitude uh, of the heart. Um, again, and this just leads into some of these other ones. Slander, right? Giving a, a false speech to injure someone. Telling something that's not true about someone. You're slandering them. It's false. So they'll be injured or, or um, hurt in some way. Um, filthy language. Uh, some of your translations will say abusive speech. That's what that means. Now, as I looked at this in this context, this does not mean cussing. Okay, so right away I'm like, filthy language. I can't say those words when I stub my toe? You know, I'm not saying we can. I'm just, uh, you know, don't go cuss your brains out today because you heard someone say it's not, doesn't, it doesn't mean that. It's not what I'm saying. But in this context... This means abusive language, all right, to other people. Um, lying, he goes on to even to take it further, lying to each other, uh, a language to hurt one another. And then again, like I said, he, he goes on to, to give an example of lying. So it's not really profanity here in this context. But then he says, do not lie to each other. Don't lie to each other. And again, this one can sneak in really quick, and, and sometimes it's like it's not a big deal. Has anyone ever... It's just you've been with someone and it could be with church people or a family member and you've told like this little white lie or not even the truth without even thinking about it and then you stop and go, why did I do that? Has anyone ever done that? Like why did I even, why did I even not tell the truth? It, it didn't matter. Has anyone ever, I've done that. Like what in the world? Why did I say that? I, I didn't have to teach my kids how to lie. They just knew, right? Um, man, I remember when Clara lied to me the first time when she was little. I'm like, how did you know how to? You know, this nature we have. She just figured it out. Um, and sometimes we can find ourselves telling these just little white lies or half-truths and we just kind of brush it away. Not that big of a deal. What's Paul say? Get rid of these things. Don't lie to each other. Don't lie to each other. Verse 10 I love this, again, because he comes back uh, with this, in, this encouragement. And he says in verse 9, Do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge and the image of its creator. He's just reminding us again, look, you've been made new. This is your new self. You've taken off this stuff anyway. Just put it to death. Get rid of it. And remember, you're new, you have a new life. And, and in a phrase in here, it says, basically it says this to us, be who you are. Think about that just for a minute. Christians, you've been saved. You've, you've got this new life. Old is gone, new has come. You're pure, you're without blemish, right? You've received his righteousness, not your own, not by how good you are, not that you're a good moral person, but because he died for you, you've, you've surrendered to that. His blood has washed you clean. Um, be who you are now. A child of God. Holy. No blemishes. Love. Forgive. Grace-filled. Man, be who you are. I love that. I love that. Oh, let's look at verse 11 because it gets cool here too. Another great reminder. We'll end here. 
It says, Here there is no Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, by barbarian, Scythian, slave or free. But Christ is all and is what? In all. Now, remember, Paul is writing to a church there in this, this city where cultures are coming in from all over the place. Remember that? It was a trade route. So people are coming in to trade. And this, this church, these Christians who were once pagan and now they're in Christ, they're learning all these things. They've got this brand new life. They're seeing all these people come in from all different kinds of cultures, all kinds of ideas, all kinds of skin colors. They're seeing all this. And here Paul goes vertical. And what's he say? Basically, he says, listen, what the world has divided, Christ brings together. Following me? What the world has divided, Christ brings it together. Vertical. Here, there is no Jew or Greek. See how that division was there? None of that. There's no slave or free. Gone. It, what, there's no circumcised, uncircumcised. That was a big deal back then. Gone. That's not what, what the world has divided, what man has divided, whether it be race or social class or all that garbage. Paul says none of that's there. Christ is in all. Black, white, red, yellow, brown, purple, whatever. In Christ, we are one race. And in a world where we still live, which still blows my mind, we have all the racial tension that we have, what a good reminder. We are the body of Christ. We are the church. We don't look like the world. We do not divide. In Christ, we are one. And there is no division there based on your skin color or your social class or your weight or the color of your hair or whatever that we want to create to, break, to divide. In Christ, he brings that all together. And we are one. One. I'm going to read that again. Verse 11. Listen to what he says. Here, in the church, with us, there is no Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, or free. But Christ is, in, is all and is in all. Amen? Amen. So church, let's look different like we're called to. Let's live different like we're called to live when it comes to these things. And again, here's the thing, as we kind of wind down a little bit, for some of us, we see these lists, you know, put these things to death, get rid of these things, and that's kind of what we see as a to-do list. And we only see a list. It goes beyond a list. This is so far beyond just a list for us to check things off. I'm gonna put that away, I'm gonna put that away, I'm gonna put that away. This is a heart thing that Paul is getting at here. Remember what he said in, in the verse one? Since then, if you have been raised with Christ, you are brand new. Put these things off. It's a response. It is a loving, obedient response to a Savior who has saved me. And I want to. I want to. I desire to because I'm falling in love with him more and more and more. I'm getting to know him more and more and more so it's a response. God, I don't want this stuff. I've seen you. I see you. I don't need this stuff so I'm gonna put it to death. I'm gonna get rid of it. I'm gonna kill it. And we have this incredible uh, relationship with him that grows. Um, it's not just about a list. But it's about this new life, this new heart, and this desire to go vertical. It's a desire to follow. It's a desire in us as followers of Christ to grow. A desire to move in Him, to know Him more, to love Him more. And when we move like this, what happens? People see it, right? There's, there's evidence. When we're actually moving and growing, there's that fruit. Remember he says, keep bearing fruit. Keep growing, keep moving. And that begins to take place in our lives. So it's not just a list. So if you're a list person, be careful. If you tend to be a little legalistic on some things, be careful because putting these things off isn't gonna get Jesus to like you more. That's not the point. <laughs> or to earn some special favor. You're already a child of God. You put it off because he saved you. And he wants what's best for you. And he's reminded you of the freedom you have. Put it off. Put it off. So, I'm going to close uh, and start wrapping things up here. Um, I want to give a question. Actually, it's not even a question. I want you to, to finish this statement. I'm going to give you a moment to do this. Um, finish this. And in light, of what we, in light of what we've been talking about in Colossians, finish this statement, okay? 
First thing that comes into your head, if you're a note writer, write this down, okay? I am a Christian because. How would you answer that? You don't have to say it out loud. I am a Christian because. What's your first reaction? And there are a couple, there are a couple reactions here. Sometimes uh, you ask this question, you know, why, why are you a Christian or what makes you a Christian? Well, I go to church. This is, guys, this is true. Well, I believe in Jesus. Um, I, I, I go to church. Um, I'm a good person. Um, I, I have good morals. This is everywhere. I mean, this, this is, there's tons of Christians around because they believe or go to church. You know, and I think I've shared this before, but my, my wife has said this to my kids, and I'm sure you've heard this. This wasn't her idea, but, you know, does, does you know, standing inside a garage make you a car? No. Does just being here make you a Christian this morning? No. Guys, we got to think about that. And there's more. So, so is, is it, I'm a Christian because, look, I'm a Christian because of what Christ has done, because of the cross of Jesus. And scripture says, look, uh, I've died with him and I've been raised with him and I'm a brand new creation because of him, not because of the rules I'm following, not because of these things, but because of him and that I have a new life, uh, I have a new heart because of his sacrifice on the cross, uh, that he's given me this brand new heart, uh, he's given me his grace, he's given me his love, he's given me his goodness and he, he walks with me all because of what he's done. So inside of me there is a desire to grow. There, I want to grow, I, I want to be a disciple of his, I want to follow out of a response for his goodness and his grace and his love in my life. And I will put these things off Again, not to get good favor, but because I belong to him and I, and, and I love him. So let me ask you these questions as we close. I'm gonna have the praise band come out. Um, one is this, is have I fully surrendered? I'm talking about life. So in my life, as I'm moving in this walk with Christ, if you're in Christ, if you're not, please um, come ask us and we wanna invite you to this because it's awesome. Um, You'll, you'll never regret it. But am I, am I, have I really fully surrendered my life? So that, that's the first one. The second one this is we've talked about the desire. And this is a tough question. Think about what goes on outside of this building. Do I really have a desire to follow him? So, so outside of church, what's my life look like? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Is that desire there? to keep growing, to keep knowing him, to worship him. Um, I'm not trying to guilt trip you, okay? I'm asking a simple question that I think we know the answer to when it comes to desire. And if there's no desire outside of Sunday morning worship, um, maybe a, 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 you know, the warning meter should go up just a little bit. And you need to have a heart to heart with the Lord. Do I even have a desire? Um, Good question. Next week, um, praise band. Hey, Q, you guys can come out. Um, <laughs> uh, um, next week, um, what we're going to do is we're going to um, move on into to not the put offs, what we just talked about, but what we do is we want to move on and forward into what we clothe ourselves with. Paul, Paul says, put these things off, destroy them, but, but we want to put these things on. So next week, um, come back because we're going we're gonna to talk about those things that we clothe ourselves with. Um, before we sing and we close with a song, I want to I wanna read this to you again from um, Colossians. I want to read this verse again like we did last week, verses 1 through 4, and it's personalized. Again, we had a, a, one of our family members. Um, stick this on my window in my office and um, it was really cool. So I, I wanna, I'm gonna finish this and it says this, starting with verse five, I think we're gonna have it up there um, but it just makes it personal. Ready? It says, therefore, I will consider the members of my earthly body as dead to immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which amounts to idolatry. For it is because of these things that the wrath of God will come upon me and the sons of disobedience. And in them I once walked when I was living in them. But now I must put them all aside. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, and an abusive speech from my mouth. I should not lie to others since I laid aside the old self with its evil practices. 
And I have put on the new self who is being renewed to a true knowledge according to the image of the one who created me. A renewal in, uh, in renewal in which there is no distinction between Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, and free man. But Christ is all and in all. All right? Let's stand. I'm going to invite you to stand, and we're going to close in a song. And I do want to invite you, if, if um, this morning something has hit you or, or you need to make a decision of some sort, um, if you're without Christ and, and you want, want to, to know what that means to follow, please come forward um, and find me or find someone, again, someone here you trust, um, and make that decision. Don't keep putting it off, please, and begin that walk uh, with him. But uh, as we sing, I would invite you to come forward with that.
All right. And here in a minute, I'm going to have the elders come up because we're going we're gonna to pray over these guys. But I just want to introduce you guys to, to Matt and Hannah. And there's a lot going on with these two because you guys are getting married soon, aren't you? Uh, next May. Next May. <laughs> All right. Um, well, but these guys have been coming for a while. I know Matt has for quite a while and, and uh, Hannah too. And so um, they have come forward. Um, they've been meeting and they went through what we believe and have... Um, Again, just participating in our services for a while and have stepped forward and said they want to make NLCC their home. And so uh, this morning, uh, they're going to place their, their membership uh, with us. So uh, I'm going to ask you guys, um, like we ask everyone, uh, the most important question is, do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and have you surrendered your, li your lives to him? Yes. yes? All right. All right. I'm going to ask you guys the same question. Members, you guys ready? Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and have you surrendered your lives to him? Yes. yes. All right. How awesome is that? So uh, I'm going to have these guys, we're going to pray for them, but I'm going to have you guys stay put just for a little bit as we dismiss <laughs> um, just what they want to do. So if you haven't met these guys, um, please come forward and introduce yourself, and uh, we look forward to, to serving with them uh, in the future uh, as we keep moving. So uh, guys, if, if there are elders in this room, can you come up? And um, I just want to invite you up here to pray as we pray for these two. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, let's pray for these guys. Father, we thank you so much for today and uh, we and uh, for the blessings you give us. And uh, Lord, we just want to lift up uh, Matt and Hannah to you. And Father, uh, as they're thinking about uh, marriage and this upcoming marriage, Father, you would bless them and guide them and work in them um, as they discover. Um, a pretty awesome thing. Um, so, Father, bless them in that. And, God, we're excited um, that they've been coming and uh, that they've made a decision just to plant their feet here. Uh, Father, thank you for that. And uh, we praise you for that. And that's a huge step and an important step, God. And um, so would you help us uh, be good family to them? Um, help us reach out to them. Help us serve with them. And, and God, I pray you find a place for them to plug right in and, and be able to use the gifts that you've given them uh, to expand your kingdom. Um, God, that's our goal, and we want to do this together. So again, uh, may you encourage them uh, as, they, uh, as they plant here, and Father, uh, give them relationships and a family uh, to love them and, and support them and hold them accountable and all the goodness that comes with being a part um, of a church family. So God, we love you, we praise you, we thank you, we pray a blessing on them. I pray a blessing on all who are here, Father, as we leave this place, um, that we will be the church outside of these walls. Um, God, and that we will keep going vertical. Um, Help us to keep going vertical. And we pray these things in your name. Amen. Amen. All right. Come on up and meet these guys if you haven't had a chance. Okay.